The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily express those of W Rock Radio and its sponsors. All shows are independently owned and broadcast for entertainment purposes only. Readers and listeners are advised that neither W Rock Radio nor its owners and agents shall be held liable for the content of programs. Website content and any audio produced and streamed by W Rock Radio is protected copyright and may not be recorded, rebroadcast, redistributed, or reused without express written permission. Two, three, four. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. These times go by so very fast Wounds never last Just breathe Breathe in, breathe out Quiet, we still don't shout Tell us what it's all about Just breathe Sometimes Welcome to the Just Love Show. Thank you so much for joining me again um, on another beautiful day here in Northern California. Uh, Sit back as we always do and uh, take in a deep breath. Think about all the things you have to be thankful for, all the things that fill up your life. And you know, I was I was giving some thought to that in in the you know past year since I've been doing the show. I've never really described what it is. Well, I can't tell you what to be grateful for or thankful for. Um, Let me describe what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for this most minute bacteria. I'm grateful for everything both internally and externally, all of the ecosystems that allow us to thrive, to be. Because if we don't embrace all of these things and cherish these things, because we, we literally would not be here without them, and we forget this sometimes, we forget that we are a part of a system, a living process, life's process, our process, that we, we, we just really, one of the fundamental flaws in human thinking is that somehow we're apart from all these things. Um, and it's, it's, it's a little bit crazy. I watched a show last night called um, Planet Ocean, and it really started at the beginning, how the oceans were formed uh, back you know, 4.5 billion years ago or so, how the first very smallest bacteria that all life came from came to be. And I thought, you know, we just don't really understand. We don't see our interconnectedness. We don't see our um, connection to all life the way we should. And it, it's really, it's a dangerous um, thing. It's a, it's a dangerous perspective that we have. Um, it's led us to... Um, a fairly critical point in our history where we have to again open ourselves to that understanding or there's a very real chance that we may not be so when I say sit back and breathe and take in all the things that you're grateful for that's what I'm talking about I'm talking about the very essence of life itself 
talking about the very essence of love itself. So take in all of that for a moment and just breathe through it. And then uh, I want to read, as I do, a little something um, that I wrote that goes along with uh, the show today and my thinking. And this is something that actually came to me today. If you love not the life of the most minute bacteria as you would love your mother, brother, sister, father, lover, then you love and care for, um, for their and your own life not at all. As without all creatures small, there would be no creatures great. That is how deeply dependent and interdependent human life is to all other life. But the truth is, we need all other life more than all other life needs us. This is a fact our highly evolved ego has deluded um, our species to forget. And then this is a quote from Einstein. A being is a part of a whole uh, called by us the universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. The delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our own personal desires and to affection uh, for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living things and the whole of nature in its beauty. Albert Einstein. Now, I have a wonderful guest. She is... um, friends with my dear friends Harold and uh, Harold Becker and John Goltz from the Love Foundation. In fact, she is one of their um, executive directors on their board. Um, Her name is Tam Katzen, and I hope I pronounced her name right. She is a musician. She is a healer. She is an intuitive. Um, She is a Reiki master. Um, And without further ado, I would like you to welcome, I'd like to welcome Tam Katzen to the show. Hi, Tam. Hi, how are you? I am wonderful. How about you? I am doing great. Thank you for having me. Loved your opening. And yes, you did pronounce my name correctly. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. Well, uh, before we get into your story, how did you get to know John and Harold? Oh, you know, they were um, a couple of guys that, you know, you kind of walk into in that moment in time in your life when you go, oh, my God. How, you know, how have you been for the past 2,000 years? <laughs> it was it was really that kind of connection. It was a very special moment. They, I was running a, um, an art gallery in Florida at the time with my family. And we had just moved there from Seattle. And they had walked in. You know, it was probably December, Christmas time. They were looking for, for gifts. You know, it was that kind of experience that was kind of... You know, mundane as the day was going on, but um, absolutely perfect in the you know the cosmic scheme of things, if you will. So, so uh, that's how we met, and we hit it off because we had the love connection, obviously, um, in common. And um, yeah, so it's just been a terrific ride, as we say, because not too long after uh, that was in the early nineties. Let's see, I've known them for over twenty years now. Um, Love Foundation has has uh, not been built yet, so to speak, um, but we, you know, had talked about it quite a bit because it was certainly an idea that they had uh, been thinking of for a while. So I've been very honored to be a part of it all these years since the, its inception, which is over 15 wow. years. Yeah. Wow. So you've been, since the very beginning of the Love Foundation, you've been a part. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I have been. I know. It is. It's great. It's It truly is an honor, and they're amazing People and for those who haven't checked out the Love Foundation, uh, they are a nonprofit and it's a great organization. It truly is. Well, how, you you, um, you guys connected over obviously love and love connects us all. <laughs> um, but where did this start for you? I, I know that you um, in your bio it, it talks about you uh, being a successful singer songwriter from the age of seventeen, um, and it seemed like that was sort of a starting point, and then you sort of evolved after that. So how did how did this all begin for you? Yeah, it's such a it's such a good question, and and I think it's actually more like your story. Um, it's very similar. It certainly has similar pieces. When I was young, I would say probably four or five years old. I think you were maybe a little older than that. But I um, I had a very interesting uh, encounter that I remember quite distinctly, which um, you know the. First of all, I'll give a little build background. Obviously, four or five, you know, you haven't been talking that long, and you haven't been, you know, um, 
certainly, you know, in a place, you know, where you're learning a whole lot yet. I mean, obviously we are from a youth standpoint, things are new, but um, I had been, you know, I think it was in the family household, the folks had somebody over, I don't even know who this person was. They do not remember this particular scenario, certainly not like I do. And um, they had someone over that must have been a friend of theirs and they were sitting around the table talking um, belief systems, politics, you know, religion, who knows, but it was all based on belief systems. And obviously I wasn't engaged in a conversation with any of them, but for some reason I overheard something. And I can't tell you what it is, I can't tell you, what, you know, where the trigger was, but whatever um, came up in conversation had to do with religious beliefs and politics. And um, as they were discussing, I stood up, kind of went over, and just started on this dissertation of how love was the answer to everything. And if they would just pay attention, <laughs> everything would be just fine. But it was, it was a long, yeah, I'm obviously shortening it there, but it was a very long dissertation that obviously everyone just kind of stopped and looked. And for me, it was obviously something very innate. Um, and you know, up to certainly that point and even beyond, my parents weren't religious. They did not bring us up um, it, you know, with a religion, you know, perspective anyway, or religious perspective. Um, so I didn't really have context where that would come from. You know, I wasn't in school yet. I wasn't uh, talking to other people, you know, who had other belief systems. So it was definitely innate. And I just came across like I just knew this stuff like it was my name. So that kind of started obviously something. But when you're that young, as you know, it, you don't... Um, really know where to place it. I mean, what does it really mean? I mean, for me, it was a, a conversation and probably not even uh, not even a large conversation. It was probably just my conversation in that moment. Uh, obviously, strange to them. To me, it was just what the answer was. Um, so, you know, very strange memory. It, it's stayed with me all this time. And then I've had experiences, you know, after that throughout the years, um, you know, as an intuitive, uh, when I was very, very young, um, and you kind of shut the doors to it because you don't know what it is. You think you're strange or you're crazy, and you don't tell other kids because no one's talking about it, and you just feel like a, you know the odd person out. So, I just kind of compartmentalized all those pieces, you know, pieces of the puzzle, so to speak, um, throughout. You know, growing up, didn't really know what they meant until um, I started getting older and started, you know, really paying attention to my thoughts and feelings. And you know, I was obviously a very compassionate person. So that was always kind of there at play, even if I didn't understand what that love piece meant, certainly. Um, so it kind of started there. I mean, that's, you know, it's going way, way, way back, Kip, but it, it was definitely there. You know, it, it's interesting um, because like the experience I shared with you before the show, which everyone in the audience knows, Infinity, I know, I won't share it again. Um, <laughs> But you hit on a really important point is that I don't know where that came from. I mean, number one, I still today, like I went out, uh, he's been a guest on my show, um, uh, Dr. Dean Radin, who is the chief science officer at Noetic Sciences. And Dean studies paranormal uh, phenomenon uh, through the lens of quantum mechanics. He works with Edgar Mitchell, the astronaut who founded IONS. And I told him that story and he looked at me and we were in his office in Petaluma and he said, that's not usual. <laughs> <laughs> and that was about four years ago, I guess. And I think that that was the first time it really hit me how truly unusual the experience I had was and where that would come from at the age of 12. I don't know. And it just it, it sticks with me. Like even when I write now or or manifest something, I always say I'm sharing what's shared with me to share because I know in in my soul that. I'm, I'm, these aren't original ideas that I am tapping into, uh, you know, some infinite font of information, if you will, that I'm just fortunate enough to, uh, for whatever reason, ha have this shared with me. And I, and I think that that's a really important thing for people to understand. It's not like something you saw it. It's not something you read. It's not even something for my speaking for myself that I, I take ownership for. I, I don't know how I know what I know. Yeah, it's an experience for sure. And I think that I would, you know, assume too, a lot of your listeners, 
you know, everyone has something unusual like like that. I mean, yes, it's unusual and it is very special. And at the same time, what I think is unusual about it is the memory of it. I think we tend yes. to um, have a lot of experiences. Obviously, it depends, you know, to uh, there's probably a lot of other factors involved so that probably could take us on all the different tangents. So I won't necessarily kind of throw that in the mix right now. But you know, we're, we're all, uh, you know, based on frequency and vibration. Some of us have been the, around the block, so to speak, more times than others at, at the moment, right? So if you believe in that past lifetime kind of thing, we're probably bringing stuff through again. And some people will have those memories and some people won't. And we're not necessarily supposed to on some level because we've agreed to play whatever game we're playing. But at the same time, that experience you know, whatever it is um, that you have in your life, whether you think it's a dream or an outer body or a cosmic moment um, of some sort tends to ride with us through our lifetime in this human moment so that we can say, all right, what does it mean? How does it help us get to the next, whatever the next is, the next step, the next part of our lives? How do we um, become better or more than how do we get to that infinity piece like you talked about? How do we get to know more of what that means? I mean, it truly is all that experiential pieces. And it's hard for us to put into words, right? I mean, it's it's a challenging place. There's only so many letters in the alphabet. So, um, here we are, right? That's a whole that's a whole other thing, the limitations of uh, verbal communication. <laughs> right. But but you hit on a really um, interesting point that I, I no one's ever really brought up before. And I think that that's really something... Um, to spend a moment on to get people to uh, think about in their own lives. What experience have I had that maybe because I was a kid or it seemed too odd or too spiritual or, and maybe I didn't want to say it out loud that I forgot about. But I think you're right. And we were talking about that a little bit um, before. Sometimes you, you, you know intuitively that everybody has the same ability, that Tam has no more ability than Kip and Kip has no more ability than Tam or Joe down the street or Susie across the way. We all have these experiences and maybe it is um, for whatever reason we remember those things, but maybe everyone should take a moment and say, is there a memory there? Is there a memory of that to steal from Oprah, uh, that aha moment in my life that I chose not to remember for whatever reason? Sure. I, I think that's brilliant because it, it is that... Um, we shut so much out and we're, and especially now it's not even that we shut it out on purpose. We have, you know, a, a plethora of things going on, um, at every given moment, um, you know, in front of us, you know, besides, besides the fact that we've got, you know, cell phones and computers and the TV on in the background, and then there's probably music playing somewhere else and besides our head. And, you know, there's so much happening and our thoughts, are um, going a million miles, you know, a minute, so, or a second probably. So here we are sitting in this stuff, if you will. It's hard to pull a, that specific thread or define that thread that was that moment in time when you went, oh yeah, I did have that outer body experience, or oh, I had that dream, or oh, I had that connection, if you will, to another person, place, or even thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, growing up as a child, we, you know, I think most of our um, you know, our, our memories during those times are probably more important than we know. And at the same time, um, you know, finding them or pulling them out, like we said, um, can be a challenge. Absolutely. And, and I think if you were to ask most, you know, um, a lot of creative people, that's why they keep notepads beside their bed or with them at all times, because those moments that you think, oh, my God, I've just had this grand epiphany. I've just had this great thought. Oh, I won't forget that. Yes, you will. <laughs> exactly. Trust me. <laughs> I've forgotten far more words than I've ever written. <laughs> oh, I know. I remember waking up with a symphony in my head and I went to grab a paper and I didn't have a, a book or, or paper pad or anything near me. And, and sure enough, two minutes later, everything was gone. Uh, ah, yeah. I, I, I know that feeling. <laughs> I didn't call it up for the life of me. Yeah. <laughs> so. hey. You, you hit on, a, uh, you mentioned a couple other words that are, are important to me, um, thread and vibration. Um, I came up with this idea called the, um, uh, or I should say, this idea was shared with me, um, called the tapestry theory of infinity. And 
I believe that there are infinite tapestries in infinity and that each tapestry you choose to have the experience of, um, you are a single thread. Everything's a single thread from the most minute, again, uh, particle to the largest collective thing where, where all these threads in this tapestry that vibrate at a certain frequency. And in order for that tapestry to exist, you you ha- everything has to vibrate together in harmony and unison. And what I think for the human species right now is that we're not quite in sync. We're not vibrating. We're not in tune with the vibration of this illusion right now. Do I think we can get back to uh, being in tune? I do. And and I use this um, analogy when I'm thinking about it. Is I, it. Well, one, imagine on a personal level, when you first meet someone and you fall in love it's like oh my god you're so in tune same songs everything you just and you can't get enough of that person you're that in tune then over time maybe there's a there's a hurtful word said or a little lie told or whatever and and suddenly that you're not so in sync you're not so in tune and it's like at at the at one point you were both at um 92.3 on the radio dial and then pretty soon You're at 88.5, he's at 107.7, and you don't hear each other anymore. And I sort of feel like that's where we're at in this particular tapestry is we're not really hearing each other. We're not hearing life itself in a way. I I love that analogy, and I think you're right on. I think that, um, you know, there's... There's so many ways, you know, again, we can move with the conversation with that, but I think that when you're looking at that vibrational point, um, is, whether it's a soulmate, twin flame, if you're talking relationships like that, and those can be, um, they don't have to be romantic, they can be um, platonic, you know, as well, which a lot of people sometimes don't think about, but who, you know, you think of that best friend, or you think about that, you know, partner, and and when you're in that romantic sense, and when you use that analogy of kind of shifting, um, that's exactly what tends to happen because someone may or may not um, be ready to shift their vibration into that, you know, in order to, you know, get to that that same dial, if you will, um, because they have to agree, just like you're on a path, you know, and you're cho- you're choosing where to go. You can head one direction and the other person is heading another direction or maybe they're just not ready to head any direction, right? They're right. in the neutral the neutral zone and they just can't move. It's hard for them. And I think that's why we have created what sounds like and feels like a dissonance. Now, I don't think that there's necessarily anything, I don't want to say there's anything wrong with it. I think it just is. I think that's how we set ourselves up as a human race. Um, I think that's shifting, though, and changing because I, I truly believe that consciousness is rising. And so those vibrational frequencies are really coming closer together as to further apart. Mm-hmm. However, it is more noticeable when they're further apart because the rest of the consciousness group, if you will, is starting to move that vibration higher, if that makes any sense. Oh, absolutely. And and I think that... Um you know, as far as right or wrong, I, I, I don't feel that there is a right or wrong. It's just the choice of how you're choosing to have your experience. And, and I, so I absolutely agree with you on that. And I also think that it is very clear um, where consciousness is going. And I think that you see very clearly in our politics, in uh, things that are going on in the world from the peace movement to ongoing war, you see the that the choice is very clear now as to how do you want to choose to be. If you want to choose to be this way, that's fine, but this is going to be the outcome of that. If you want to choose to be that way, well, this is the outcome of that. And, and again, no judgment over right or wrong. It's just the experience you're choosing to have and how you're choosing to have it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's it's amazing. Um, now, we can look at it that way for ourselves. We've done a, a lot of work personally, right? And I think a lot of people listening to your show, I would imagine, um, 
hopefully would you know feel the same or certainly on that path to I think part of the, the challenge we've all run into is um, and part of our frustration especially when you mention like politics and governments and you know things that are out there so to speak that are still part of us that's still that reflection but it's um, it's that place where we're all trying to figure out well we can see where it should go or is supposed to go and in our hearts i think we know it's going there but it's mm-hmm. easy to um sometimes look at those around us and wonder oh gosh where where are they <laughs> where, right where are they where are they headed because i'm not sure they're going down the same road i'm going and i don't know where to fit them and especially you know fit, fit them into your life but then where especially if they're family or someone that you can't necessarily disconnect from it can certainly be frustrating on because we can't make them get on any kind of path. We all know right. that. And yeah. I think some of the frustration certainly now that's coming about and just even weaves into that tapestry, you know, piece that you're talking about is um, they will get there, but we can't force them or push them to right. obviously do anything other than what they're doing. And so we need to find all of us and your listeners, all of us need to find a way of just loving them, there you go, just love, Um, just love them so that they can have their their space and time knowing that they will get there. And I think that's the place we need to hold is how, you know, that's really the way we can help is is even when things look really dark and dreary and, you know, seeing just even what's going on, you know, whether it's the news or whether it's politics, which is so entertaining these days, it's turning, <laughs> it's turning away from that, turning it off so we don't get too caught up in the angst of it, right? Right. So that we can pull that love piece out and go, you know what? I'm focusing on love. I'm going to stick with this. <laughs> it's it's not a rose-colored glasses thing. It's just, it's a way to hold the vibration in that frequency higher. So when everyone else is ready, they'll jump on board. Well, and, and I, I, it's never uh, come to me before, but it just came to me while we're talking. It seems that the um, the choice, as far as how to be, is the choice between the illusion of control or acceptance of what is. Yeah, yeah. And, and it seems I, I don't. I've never really thought about it in those terms before. But I mean, I thought about the illusion of control um, a lot. And I, I think one of the best. Um, illustrations of that was uh, there was a movie called Instinct with Anthony Hopkins and mm-hmm. Cooper Gooding Jr. And it was loosely based on a great series of books called Ishmael. Uh, My Ishmael and the Story B were the three books. It's about a gorilla who teaches us our history. Uh, he's te- uh, telepathic and teaches humans uh, their history uh, through the eyes of a gorilla. And the movie was supposedly based on that, but it was uh, it was much more violent than that. Anthony Hopkins lived in the jungle with a family of gorillas, and poachers come and kill his whole family, and he loses his mind and kills the poachers and gets put into a mental institution, and Cuba Gooding Jr. is a psychiatrist. Anyway, they end up, there's a scene where he's, Cuba Gooding Jr. is working with Anthony Hopkins, who's really not insane at all. Um, he just frustrated with human, uh, humans. And so he goes around behind Cooper Gooden Jr. and he gets him into a hold where he could kill him. And then he's forcing him to write down these words, tell me what I've just taken from you. And he says, um, you know, my freedom, no, you never had that. And he says this, and he said, no, you never had that either. And then he says control, and he said, no, you never had that either. And then he writes down my illusions. And he said, yes, that's what I've taken from you. I've taken from you the illusions of control. Ah, interesting. Yeah, and I and I kind of think that that is, um, it, it really is that simple. Do I accept what is and how things work, or do I um, fight them, believing that somehow I have control over this illusion? That that in actuality I don't. It's going to be what it's going to be, um, regardless. Life's process goes on. Um, in fact, I watched. Um, uh, have you ever heard of a, a television series called Life After People? Um, I don't think so. I'll have to look that one up. It's really fascinating because what they do is they have a, it's on um, history and they have a, they have all these different scenarios of what would happen if people were gone. It doesn't make a judgment as to why people are gone. They're just gone. And there's two 
really fascinating um, observ- or things to observe in this. One, that in a relatively short period of time geologically, meaning that like say 10,000 years, in 10,000 years almost none of our constructs, our cities, are recognizable. Nature has completely taken back everything. All of the organic matter is gone. We, we haven't built a lot out of stone like the ancients did, so there's not even those sort of remembering uh, remembrances of us. We're just gone. The other thing that uh, sticks with me about that is how life thrives without us here. And I just, you know, sort of like I was talking about in the opening of the show, it's like we are part of this process. The process is far bigger than us. It's, it's up to us to accept our place in this process. We can fight it and we can pretend that we have control over it, but when you really get down to it, we don't. And it's about us accepting and really embracing with all the love in our soul what a marvelous experience this is for the time that we have it rather than believing that somehow we can extend it past the natural course that it's supposed to take. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it, it's a matter of, you know, we can focus on the destruction and the fear and, you know, all those things that go against something, right? Mm-hmm. Or we can focus on love, which, you know, creates that harmonious balance. And that embracement, I think, is critical. It's part of that letting go process. But if you and if you truly or if we um, were truly to embrace, you know, everything that is going on in our experience and find a way to love that experience in some form or fashion, it transforms us mm-hmm. completely. Yep. Know? And I think that's, you know, th- those those pieces. Yeah, they're, they're very cosmic and it's and it's all about everything around us we do take things for granted yeah and and one one last thought on this and then i want to get uh, uh back to your story is back something we were talking about as far as judgment and you know right or or the wrongness of something that's the good or evilness of something you know the the sun um if it were to encounter a black hole doesn't go, oh my God, the black hole's evil. Oh my God, the sun is positive. It's just part of the cycle and the process of life going on and continuing and creating something new. We tend to place a value judgment on these natural processes instead of just accepting them for what is. Whether And, and overcoming, especially when it comes to our own um, uh, natural cycle, life, birth to death, um, that's something that we struggle with and embracing that unknown and accepting it as part of the process of creation, the part of life's process, it seems to me to be one of the uh, hurdles that we're getting closer to overcoming. I, I totally agree. Uh, and I, I'm wondering, uh, sorry, I don't know if you can hear that. There's a, someone's car or <laughs> is going on. Oh, no. So, um, got a little sidetracked there um but i agree with you and i think you know again it's it's about you know who we can ask the big questions you know who are we where are we headed um where are our choices where what are we going to focus on and i think that um you know only we can participate in the answer based on the experience that we want to have if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so anyway, back to your story. So you had this experience when you were very young, and then you uh, started your career as a, as a singer-songwriter and were having uh, success by a really early age of 17. Um, and then some things happened that uh, took your journey in a new direction and, and maybe brought you back to this, if I'm understanding correctly? Yeah, well, I um, when I was singing... Um, well, early on, this has happened a few times, so I won't go into too much detail, but I had um, I had become ill and had some, you know, like a lot of people out there, these mysterious illnesses that tend to kind of pop up here and there, which I'm finding with most, uh, most everyone I talk to, someone has had something in their world that has, uh, you know, kind of shown itself. And um, so I kind of went through this process um, when I was, um, you know, singing and, and I was um, having some issues just strength-wise and um, 
going through the, the just a whole shifting process, you know, and, and part of that was really, all right, I am not my body, I'm not, you know, going to succumb to any of this. So it kind of pushed me um, to, you know, to think about, all right, well, you know, what do I want to do about this? I'm not going to give in to it. And I know that, you know, I, I had the, the healing pieces within me for years, but I wasn't really sure. I hadn't been practicing certainly as a, um, you know, as a, whether it was a Reiki practitioner or energy intuitive. I mean, all those pieces kind of uh, popped up in my world when I was even, you know, very young, but I didn't, again, know what they were. So, as I kind of passed the, the teens and into the early 20s and kind of going through this kind of up and down cycle, um, even through, you know, my 30s, I finally just um, just sat down with myself and said, I really have to dig deep here. And since I had you know, been a musician, I instantaneously gravitated right over to sound healing. And so I started working with sound, vibration frequency. I started um, going back to that inner knowing of love and how that played in. And then, um, you know, through, you know, discovery, if you will, over years of, of you know, practice and practice and practice, I finally, um, you know, got that me message in meditation one day. And, and it was, a, you know, a strong one that led to um, a very specific um, message, which was a lack of belief in, in who I was, was and who I was meant to be. It was really the reoccurring issue. And that self-love and that pure intention of, um, of just healing and who I was and who I wanted to become, et cetera, would actually be the remedy for me. So that's kind of where... Um, it really took off in a whole other direction because you know I played with things things you know meant a lot to me over the years but I had because I wasn't feeling well for several years prior I just went back into business I could function it was no problem functioning it's just some of the you know the other things with um, my voice you know um, affected my, the thyroid which affects you know the vocal cords things like that were um, were just you know taking me down so to speak and what I realized is I was taking me down. And so, so all those pieces kind of came together. And as I started on this, you know, other part of my journey of becoming, um, you know, stronger, you know, at uh, my healing abilities and my intuitive nature, um, it just, everything started to change. I mean, my world started to change. I certainly, and, um, I was working with people and helping them. I'd certainly helped myself, um, you know, get back into, uh, you know, full gear. And I'm definitely, you know, healthy and loving that right now um, and expect that to always be the case. But it still always came down to love. You know, you, gotta, you have to love yourself enough to, to take the chance of going down that road that, you know, your intuitive pro is probably pulling you towards, but you may not have the courage to do. And those are some of the pieces that everyone kind of struggles with on a day-to-day -day basis is, you know, how do we pick ourselves up um, off the ground when we really are, you know, feeling that we've beat ourselves up one too many times and then jump on track. And, um, and so, you know, that was kind of it for me as far as how I got back to, into this other place and certainly where I am now as far as the work that I do. But, um, but it really, it, it, it took some strength. It took some, you know, practice for sure. But um, I don't think I would do it any differently, I have to say. Let me ask you this. You, you, you said um, you, you, you know, had the awareness that you're not your body. And this is something that through almost every religion, uh, through almost every spiritual teaching, and now even in science, when you get down with quantum mechanics, you, you get down far enough, there's nothing there what is your experience or feeling about why that is even though we all say it and i think we all know it why do you think that's so tough for us to live out that's a great question <laughs> um i think we're built that way on purpose i think part of it has to do you know certainly when i work with with um my clients right i have a lot of people who kind of run into those walls they they feel they 
they can't do something, they've, they've certainly grown up in a certain way that, whether it's philosophy or the social aspect or um, certainly a family belief system, um, we've come in uh, to this lifetime needing and, uh, you know, literally from the depths of our soul to break all the rules to a degree. And, and I think that has to do with um, getting back to our true nature of who we are. It was something we set up for ourselves. I don't believe that any roadblocks or any kind of um, lack of anything, you know, without kind of getting too esoteric, but we truly have to um, find our way out of our, of the own, our own hole that we dug ourselves and we've done it on purpose. <laughs> you know, we've created the game. I would say that and on a very specific level because it's that uh, I don't know that we would try so hard otherwise. I don't think we would have, um, we'd look at ourselves in the ways that certainly like we're having this conversation now about love. You know, what does that mean? How do we use that? Uh, or how do we get to that to answer every question that we would ever have? We have all the answers within ourselves, but um, we put the blinders on. And I truly just believe that it's part of the process um, that we've created in order to go through that learning experience, hopefully, so we never do it again. I mean, that's my hope, <laughs> you know, anyway, because I really don't want to go through some of this stuff again. I'm happy to go through it once, do what we need to do, or, the, or you know, to get to this point. When I say once, I don't just mean maybe this lifetime, but, you know, once we get to a certain level of vibration and frequency, um, you know, I expect, and certainly everything that I'm told from, you know, as an intuitive, um, we just keep going, you know, we keep going to a higher level, to a higher level, to a higher level. Um, and so I think there's a point where some of this will fall away. But, um, but you know, it's, it's a great question you have, Kip, and I, I don't know that we can block it out, certainly in a short amount of time in a conversation, but I think, you know, all those things certainly have something to do with, you know, do with it. And it's, you know, We've agreed to a lot of really interesting stuff, haven't we? Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting. Our our ego um, tells we we live with ego truths that make really no sense. Whether it's from us discussing like we are now um, being uh, our understanding that we're spiritual beings, that we're soul, we're not matter, we're not flesh, we're not body. To what I was discussing at the beginning of the show this disconnect that we have with the very source of physical life on this planet. Um, it, this all seems to be th these stories that um, our ego tells us that for some reason, um, and, I, and like you said, I don't know, uh, it's, it's why, why we uh, do this or have this experience. I, I'm not sure that we, we know or will ever know, but we do seem to tell ourselves um, stuff that just defies any common sense or logic, <laughs> you know, yet, yet we, yet those truths become so entrenched that we quite literally fight and die for them. And, and it is, it is really a fascinating phenomenon. And, and I think if you were to sit, like if I were to sit down with somebody and say, okay, you understand that we came from bacteria that you know we have bacteria in our gut right now that keeps us alive we wouldn't be here without this bacteria um and externally we have these other ecosystems where people go yeah yeah i get that well then why aren't you living that out <laughs> <laughs> and i would say the same thing about the spiritual okay you 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 know that we get down okay from a science perspective if you're not going down the spiritual path you understand there's nothing there oh yeah i, I get that but internalizing those things, the ego really sort of stops. It, there's something that's there, and, I, and I'm speaking for myself too. I mean, I would like to say I'm, I'm completely a spiritual being. I'm, I fully get that. I'm, I'm able to go wherever I want, do whatever I want, whenever I want to do it. I, I'm not there. <laughs> and I'd also like to say that I have uh, been able to move back to oneness with life's process. I, I mean, I do my best. It's very hard in... Um, this construct of civilization that we have now to do that. Um, but even, even there, it's like, okay, I, am I really living that out? And I would have to say that, um, as, as much as I succeed, I probably fail. Yeah. 
you know, and not not for lack of knowing, not for lack of trying. It just seems to be part of this experience. And to another uh, something you mentioned that I've given a lot of thought to, because I, I, you know, I I want to believe like you do. I never have to come back and have this experience because there's a lot of things that I don't want to. I wouldn't want to have the experience of again. But then I then I have to fall back to my understanding of what infinity is and be sort of practical, if you will, about what that really means. And for me, what infinity means is that nothing can be added to or subtracted from it, um, that there is no time that, uh, you know, much to our dismay and, and probably to what would drive us insane is that quite literally everything is happening all at once. And I've almost gotten to the point where I, I sort of feel like, nope, this is just an experience, sort of like I've cast myself in this particular movie and um, it, it might not be a movie I ever want to see again, but it's definitely a role <laughs> I've chosen to come to play. And maybe maybe I would at another point. Maybe I am. Well, in fact, I am certain that I am playing this part probably again, only in a different way. But I would probably say that there's also conversations going on in these other infinite me's having these other infinite experiences where I'm also saying, I don't want to come back and do this again. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with you. I mean, I, everything you say, said for sure. I mean, it's because even the even when I say, well, you know, I don't want to come back and do this again. I mean, I I'm very aware of the infinite, you know, experience, and and certainly, um, I think what we do is we we come back and do it again, but differently. Like it's not the Groundhog Day, right? It's like not no. sitting there going over and over and over and over. I hope not, anyway, for most people, um, but. You know, it's we at some point, right? In that infinity loop, you you stick your toe out into another part of that existence, and that changes things. It's kind of like the you know the butterfly effect. There's mm-hmm. something that shifts, right? But as, yep. if we're if we're definitely on that path going higher into a higher frequency, so maybe this go round we're you know at a you know a sixth level vibration. The next you know, it's going to be seventh, eighth, you know, we just keep going. To me, that's more of that infinity chord, right? right. We're still moving. We're still along the t- a, a timeline, if you will, if you want to call it a timeline, um, uh, and not a, ti- a timeline of infinity, not a timeline that's that's detailed and specific. But, mm-hmm. you know, that we just keep going, you know, the infinity stretches, right, into that um, ob- oblivion or throughout the, you know, the, the cosmos. Right. Um, it's still infinity, and we're getting deeper, yep. right? We're probably yep. making a few people car sick. But I think, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, you know, it's funny to bring it back to something more terrestrial, if you will. <laughs> um, the, you know, we, we say, we throw that, uh, and again, this is something I hadn't thought about until we're having this conversation. Um, but even in the Groundhog Day scenario, uh, if you look at the Bill Murray movie, mm-hmm. It was only Bill Murray who was having that same experience over and over again. He was the one changing slightly to change the experience. Nobody else knew they were having the same experience. Right, over right, over again. right, exactly. So it's infinity to everybody else just as much as it is for, is for him, right? Except uh, he had yep. to make the choice. Yep, and he was aware that when he came back to each one of those Groundhog Days, that he had that if he changed his choices, he would change the outcome of, of how the day went. Yeah, exactly. And that that's exactly, you know, we when you say, let's, let's bring it back to that terrestrial piece. Yes, that's really what we're going through. It's all about our choice. You know, are we going to choose to uh, live in love and have an experience based on that? Um, or are we going to choose something that pulls us away right. from, from love? Still in the infinity loop, right? But you can Absolutely. still make those choices. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I, I remember I was driving down the freeway. This was, um, I don't know, maybe a year ago. And I just had, it was almost like I was experiencing two things at the same time. One, I just continued to drive up the other road. The other one, I got distracted or something and I swerved into a truck. And I went, you know what, both those things are happening right now. In fact, infinite other things I'm having the same experience because I'm making slightly different choices in each of those experiences but but they're all happening was was sort of the sense I got and it was an interesting feeling <laughs> <laughs> and you missed the truck right uh well in this in this particular experience I did 
And the other one, it didn't turn out so well. Uh, got it. Well, well, that's that multidimensional part, right? Of us that yeah. we, we talk about and there's, you know, I think we feel it. We, and to even what you just said, you know, you felt that. You, you experienced on some level what that may be like. And I think that um, a lot of people don't think that deeply. They don't, um, and that's, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I mean by that is they're not in a frequency yet to, you know, have the kind of conversation we're having where they're, they're not in that frequency yet to go, you know what, I wonder what, I wonder what that would be like, right? <laughs> exactly. and, and they just kind of go on along their day and no one really thinks about a whole lot right. and kind of, you know, takes for granted all the things, um, you know, that the day-to-day -day experience brings in their lives. And it's only until we make the choice to focus and to pay attention that we can actually make that change happen. And so that's why I think it's great that you connected to that piece for sure. Because knowing you and certainly having these conversations, it's, you know, I can see that you go, you can go extremely deep and, and very much out there. And I think, you know, for a lot of your listeners who can do that, it's such a great experience to, to, to play with because you get to know yourself in a very yeah. different way than most people do. And then for those who haven't had that opportunity, you know, I would encourage everybody, try something different. Rewire your your terrestrial, physical, corporeal body brain, you know, just try something different if you're not sure where to start, you know, but then at least you've had a different experience than you normally would have, and then you can assess mm -hmm. how it feels. And, and I feel like having this understanding, you you're sort of, for me, it gives me a greater appreciation of the experience because I just accept that it is just that an experience. Um, the other side of that, and I and I can see this experience as well, is it it could, and I don't want anyone to feel this way, but it could also make you feel somewhat nihilistic. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why am I doing this? <laughs> but then it comes back to something you said earlier: if you love yourself in every experience, that's the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it really is because that's that's not only how change occurs, but that's how you um, really uh, understand, if you will, the journey of self love. Mm -hmm. um, we really can't get too far without that. And no. if you really want to go far, which I think most people do, even though they may not be too sure of it, you know, at this very moment, underneath it all, um, that's really where most people anyway want to want to go they want to go you know what i want that grand experience i want to know what it feels like to feel love for people instead of really wanting to shout and scream and holler all the time we we do prefer to be a little more calm now some people enjoy the drama and the entertainment of it all but when they get into a quiet space and you know really feel things out or at least you know whether that's with other people or even um, I think people usually connect to it when it's like an animal, like a pet. If you have a pet, people tend to get it quicker just because they they know what that unconditional love feels like right. from that, you know, dog. Usually it's a dog. I've had cats. I love cats. I have dogs, too. But um, the cats didn't usually greet me, you know, at the door when <laughs> I came home like my dogs do. So it's it's, you know, that familiar story about pets. But we tend to really feel our heart open in those moments and everything else melts away. Well, we want that feeling. We want that in everything we do. Uh, we want that with our partners. We want that with friends. We want that, um, you know, in our daily, you know, work environment, even though that's something that most people don't get the opportunity to even get close to. You know, there's all those pieces. So it's it's an amazing journey that we've created for sure. It, it'll be interesting to see, certainly as we move through the next um, few months and into the next you know few years as we shift in consciousness because we're definitely on an amazing precipice right now. Um, I really feel that self love piece is going to come into greater play. I think we're going to see it and feel it more than ever. You, you know, it, I'm having such great epiphanies during this conversation. You just gave me another <laughs> one. Is a lot of times you hear people talk about being the participant versus being the observer, being the participant being observed versus the observer participating. And, and I start thinking about that all of a sudden from the perspective of loving yourself. And I thought if I'm outside myself and I'm observing myself, do, am, is that 
being that I'm observing, that me, is that someone I would love? And it seemed, that seems important to me. I don't know why, but it's like if I can look outside myself and observe myself and go, I love that person. What an amazing sense of self-love that is. If we get to that point where, you know, I really do love that person. I really do like that person. I, I'm good with that. It seems like an interesting perspective to gain. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's, um, I know this subject can tend to be a challenging one for a lot of people out there, but self-love, I think, you know, my personal point of view with it is we need to love ourselves through all of it. So even if you're, if you're looking at yourself as a, you know, as an observer looking in, if you can get to a place to love yourself no matter what you see, that's the place you want to be. Because you want to love yourself yeah. through the, it's not trying to strive for perfection per se, even though a lot of us will do that. It's, uh, or you know, t- certainly attempt it, right? Because to me, perfection is just, you know, it's perfection perfecting itself, like there really is no um, other, <laughs> so to speak. Right. But if you're you know, a lot of us, you know, strive to be um, thinner, uh, you know, you want to look a certain way, you want to feel a certain way, you want to, you know, uh, you, we've got a whole whole laundry list of all, you know, this wish list of who we want to be or become. Um, but self-love really has to start with where we're at. We have to love ourselves whether yeah. we're, you know, thin or fat or, or whether we feel we're ugly or beautiful or whatever it is, right? Um, we can always find something. And, and the challenge that we are certainly um, faced with is we really need to love ourselves with all of it. Got to love mm-hmm. the herbs and all the jiggly bits. You got to love, you know, Absolutely. Uh, you know, all those pieces and parts of us, you know, and that is the place um, where we really need to get to. I think that's even more important than trying to become something that we really aren't. I couldn't agree with you more, and I think that that uh, uh, um, that that observing yourself perspective of being able to say I accept myself and being coming from a place of being honest with ourselves is it again great uh, just epiphany I had is is that self love seems to it seems to me or it feels to me that if you start with being truthful with yourself it allows you to love yourself I this is who I am right now. It's not who I'm going to be tomorrow, but I love me for me right now. Yeah, absolutely. Warts and all. Yep, it is. Because I, I know from my own personal journey that, you know, I've spent, I spent a lot of time in the, quote, shadow self. And, I, 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 and I've said this to Harold, I've said to John, I've said to a lot of people, I wouldn't change anything that I've gone through because it's made me who I am today. And it's allowed me to have this shared experience with other people that if I hadn't had those experiences, I probably wouldn't be who I am today. And when I say I understand, it wouldn't come from that same place of shared experience. And so I, I really do love everything that's gone on in my life. I have to, otherwise I wouldn't be the person I love today. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. I mean, love does a lot to us and for us and with us. And I think that is the perspective when you can look back and know that you know um, who you are now is because of who you were, um, then, you know, where you're headed and who you're becoming becomes that much greater. It becomes that much more exciting, you know, of where, oh, you know, where can this experience go? Where, you know, um, there's there's just so much grander, you know, experience. And I, 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 hate, I hate to interrupt you, Tim, but we are, believe it or not, down to one minute. Left. Oh, gosh, okay. <laughs> and so tell me, where people can find you and listen to your music. She has a beautiful voice. Her songs are magnificent. I was listening to them earlier. Thank you. Anyway, I'll let you <laughs> tell people where they can find you. Uh, well, I'm. Uh, you can certainly find me on my website, which is tamkatzen.com, and Katzen is K-A-T-Z-I-N. And I'm um, on the social sites, of course, you know, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. I do monthly energy updates there, so if you connect with me, um, on YouTube, you can catch those. Um, so I'd love to love to hear from your listeners, Kip. This has just been fun. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Tam. And thank you all for joining me on Just Love Show on WLOR.net. 
or W Rock as we're calling it now. And uh, again, thank you for uh, sharing your love with me tonight. Take care and have a wonderful